Hey everyone, Steve here again with a different video. So recently I've taken up the hobby of soldering electronics. To help develop my skills, I started purchasing broken Game Boy consoles and game cartridges to fix. I find it's a good way to keep my brain cells working by diagnosing issues, and it's kind of relaxing in some ways. After I fix them, if a cartridge doesn't keep my interest, I usually resell it or give it away. There's some I can't sell due to an issue that won't be favorable to the next owner. An example of this is the cartridge presented. This is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Follow the Foot Clan cartridge from 1990. When I received it, the cartridge body was discolored due to the plastics of that time period, pieces of the shell missing with large cracks, and the label was worn and hardly recognizable. Luckily, the cartridge worked after I cleaned its pins with isopropyl alcohol and an eraser. Although, if you were to look at the actual PCB inside the shell, you'll notice that the PCB has some wear, especially on the traces that connect the bottom pins to two chips on the board. The best I can tell is that it's corrosion because even if I scrub the traces with alcohol or an eraser, it doesn't remove the dark marks. With the possibility that the corrosion could continue as time goes on, even if all of it was cleaned off, I can't sell this to anyone in this condition. On the plus side, I have a fondness for the old TMNT cartoons, so I decided to fix up the board, give it a new shell, and keep it for myself. Here, you'll see me document my process in case anyone else gets into a situation close to this. So, let's get started. My plan was to scrape away the corrosion on the front traces somehow. Before I went ahead to try something, I took a multimeter and a pen and paper to find out where the corroded traces traveled in the event I damaged something and would have to make jumper wires. My first idea was to use a fiberglass scratch pen to see if I could scrape the dark spots without having to scrape deep into the PCB's protective coating. I tried this for a good 5-10 to 10 minutes without any noticeable improvement. I only noticed fiberglass shards piling up, so that failed. After cleaning the fiberglass shards up, my other idea was using a hobbyist knife I had lying around. I'm sure an X-Acto knife or carpenter's knife would have worked as well. Basically, with as little pressure as possible, I scraped away the dark marks on a trace until I got to exposed copper. I repeated the same process on the rest of the traces until I couldn't see any dark marks anymore. When I was done, I cleaned up the debris on the board and pins with isopropyl alcohol and con swabs. To check that I didn't damage any of the traces, I placed it back in the cartridge and tested it. The game worked like normal. Before I went ahead to place something on the exposed traces, I wanted to reflow the solder on the pins of the two chips. Of all the broken cartridges I repair, this is a common fix I perform to get them working again and it helps the longevity of the game's lifespan between different owners. So I pulled out my soldering station and replaced my default tip with a bevel tip to be able to run my iron over the chip pins. I heated my iron to around 800 degrees Fahrenheit, placed flux on the pins I was going to reflow, placed a small amount of solder on my tip, and slowly ran my iron across the pins. I checked to make sure there wasn't any bridging of the pins and did the same steps for the three other rows. When I was done soldering, I took some isopropyl alcohol and con swabs to remove the leftover flux on the board. To cover the exposed traces on the front of the board, I had some half-inch captain tape lying around and looked like it was thick enough to cover the parts of the board I scraped. I've seen other people use nail polish or electrical tape, but this is what I had at the time and it does the job. If you use tape, make sure to cut a hole for the screw opening in the cartridge shell.
With the PCB taken care of, I turned my attention to a plastic cartridge. I thought about fixing the plastic with putty and retro buying it to get the original color back, but with the case already being in a brittle condition, I abandoned the idea. Instead, I found on eBay a seller who sells clean, second-hand shells. For the new label, I found a website called RetroGameCases.com that prints reproduction stickers in order to TMNT label. I placed the sticker on the cartridge by folding the top part over and lining it up with the indents of the shell. I placed the PCB in a new shell, closed it up, and now have a restored game cartridge. Hopefully this video shows that it isn't too difficult to try restoring electronics, depending on the circumstances. I'm not the brightest person out there, but if I can acquire the skills to pull this off, everyone else can do the same. If anyone is interested in soldering, I'll post in the description the videos that helped me get started. So that'll do it for me, this is Steve signing off, and thanks for watching.